youngins. Welcome back, but before we start, future me here, I forgot to really emphasize something. The food I was sent in for review free of charge by ADV themselves. I don't get to keep them, much to my dismay. But all they asked was for a fair and honest review, be it for good or bad. So, not paid by them, I get nothing out of this. If you buy something from them, all it does is say, hey look, I have a fan base that's willing to throw money at shit that I like. Or ignore stuff that I don't like. I mean, whatever the case may be. So, I've got that out of the way, let's get started. Okay, dokey. Alright. So, we're here with, obviously, the advanced food eye. What you're not seeing is the stock cable. This is the stock cable it comes with. MMCX, no real delineation to speak of. Uh, the super base had delineation, to say the least. At least a little red dot on the right side, and a little red dot on the right side of the cable. Uh, ADV, need to fix that. You really need to fix that. That's that's a no-no. That is a no-no-no-no-no. Not for the price these are going for, boys and girls. I still got my gin. Oh, boy, do I got it. Okay. These are a really weird mixed bag for me. A lot of stuff that I don't know that I was honestly prepared for, to be completely frank. This is on a next level. And preliminarily speaking, for all the goodies that it comes with, there are definitely some shortcomings. Namely which is the lack of a balanced cable, of which my Yin Yu is doing the duty in. The tips are really good. The filters available are really nice, although not replaceable. Uh, you might be able to get the mesh on there, but fun fact, I listen to these mostly on the treble filter and then I give them a quick listen without any filters on and all you're really risking is getting gunkin' up inside the nozzle hole. So, not all is lost if you lose the tip, uh, if you lose the, uh, not the tips, the, the nozzle filters. So, could be worse, could be better, but they might just sell you the film that goes over it. So you can just kind of like, you know, replace it, DIY that shit. So... I'm not sure where I'm going to stick this, but along the lines somewhere, I had mentioned that it had a very poor left-right delineation, or no delineation specifically, and that is simply, totally, and completely non-factual. As shown off in the uppy closey time last time, boop, there we go, you have your left-right delineation there, which there really needs to be something colored there, ADV. Seriously, I'm not joking. There really needs to be something colored there. Now, here's the really hard one that's kind of a bitch. Okay, this is gonna be jank as fuck. But here we go. Got the Markner flying glass. That is a teeny tiny left-right delineation, and you can judge about how big that is based on the MMCX jack. The right side's really not that much better. And I guess while we're here, we'll take a quickie peeky at this. This is what it looks like on the inside. There's your balanced armature bit, and the super base driver venting comes in through right about there. Lovely, right? Okay, let's get into whatever the hell it is I was gonna talk about here in a moment anyway. Um, okay, thanks, bye. <sighs> okay. <clears throat> All right. Okay, fine. These are not good musical IEMs. Now, hold on. Hold on. I'm not saying these are bad IEMs. No, not by any stretch of the phrasing. They're just not good. Mu uh, <clears throat> they're not stellar. There we go. They're not stellar musical IEMs. What these are is a break into a whole different world. Now, I know ATV's thing is made for, designed for musicians. Thank you, Puck of Wonders. Fuzzy Puck of Wonders. <laughs> I would not call this a stellar musical IEM. It is still a stellar IEM, and an example on when a company knows what the fuck they're doing with balanced armatures and a damn good dynamic, 
they can bring forth a harmonization therein that blows my mind away. What these are, are an excellent example, a stellar example of cinematic idiom monitors. Oh my god, yes! These have the kind of layout in terms of the tuning, the way the crossover's done, the selection of the drivers that emphasize hellishly a cinematic nature. Right, cinematic IEM, that's what these are. So if you're looking for something that has a lot of bump in the trunk and is something you could really just get really musical with, and I know that sounds a bit vague, but think of it as the bass. The bass is what changes everything. Now, definitely parts of the treble response on this are a bit more tucked in, especially where hi-hats and the decay of a cymbal exist. But for the most part, vocals, especially female vocals, but vocals and the epic score type thing is what these are good. These exemplify what an epic sound should sound like. Beautiful deep bass, wonderful, not too scooped, not too embossed, just very well pleasant mids, and just enough in the highs to accentuate the points that really matter, leaving the rest to just trickle feed in the information therein. So the under 10 minutes go or no go. For those of you looking for the quick shot, the quick fire, the fast and go, the good and dirty, yes! These get the go and not because they were sent for loan. I don't get to keep them. My god, I don't get to keep them. God damn it. Oh well, say lovey. Life goes on. But yes, these get a flying sterling silver, maybe even a golden go. If it weren't for the fact that they're $500 and they have a few things on them that really upset me, that could definitely be done better. So, whereas I want to say go out and buy these now, I would much rather be given the chance to talk with ADV and see if they could honestly sweeten the pot or make the the whole package more conducive to $500 of that's a lot of fucking money because I'll tell you right now as a quick little spoiler the GT3 super bass I like the GT3 pointy daggery stabby in the treble region and the GT3 super bass has all of the oomph and then some because it uses the same driver as these and a similar one in the GT3 original that one falls flat and flaccid when it comes to anything that's not ultra deep bass. Anyhow, we're not talking about those, we're talking about this, the Fugai. So there you go, those of you that want the quick and dirty, slappy McHappy, there's your go now go. Now if you're here for the caveats and my analyses therein, you get to learn a few new things. Are they gone? Awesome, cool. So, fun fact, I wasn't sure how truly good these were until I had taken them off and put in a select few of the annual monitors and was immediately met with a sensation of claustrophobia. It was the first time that had happened, and that was not fun. The song also sucks. Give me something more melodic, please. Thank you. And oh god, the, the sensations of claustrophobia. Uh, the sensations of just too much bass became the first thing ever that I had experienced. And I, I'll i say that, no, not the first time I've experienced it, but just the first thing that came to mind. Because normally I'm a bass junkie. You no, know, turns out I'm just a bass snob. <laughs> but here's the super secret special sauce. The thing that I was kind of gauging them with. Yeah, that's right, I own these now. These are the Ether CX from Drop. They're on a hella good deal when I bought them, like 750 bones, baby. So yeah, I uh, jumped on that ship before they sold out, cause I needed them. And then I got two day shipping, bought it like the midnight of Thursday, got it in the day of Friday or Saturday. Oh, fuck me, they were fast. 
So, yes, um, as far as my understanding leads me to believe, and as far as my little earballs have used, these are basically the best monitoring headphones out there that I can think of, or that I know of. I don't know of any other closed-back planar magnetic monitoring cans that do what these fuckers do. And they help me proofread these. And yes, my Course 95X, ESP95X, those are not monitoring headphones, they're just really good headphones, they're electrostatic headphones, different things. And that's where these... Well, you know what, let's just get into my usual thing, right? Post go no go analysis. Let's go with the base. This is what truly and honestly makes it the most cinematic fucking thing I've ever put in my ear holes. So yeah, uh, all in all, the bass starts really ascending after 1K, and I call it the bass because honestly, it's just a straight slope. A very low incline, but still a straight slope up in that direction, trending for more bass, more bass. An etherealistic, deep, impacting, soul-touching, tectonic, earth shaking, soul-numbing, bone-rattling bass in the low bass region. In the mid bass region, you get a bit more oomph in the trunk, and then as we get into the high bass, or the upper bass region, you get very, 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 very little. In fact, it comes across as very low impact in that region. So there is like no fucking bloat to speak of. There is no such thing as bleed on these when it comes to the base region interfacing with the mid region. If it does exist, then I don't know what the fuck I'm looking for. Help me, please. Help me, please. Unfortunately, due, the, due to the way they're doing base, neither does extensive detail. The Tipsy Dunma Pro offers a significantly more resolute base. It offers more, M-O-M-A-O-R, M-O-A-R, more, lots of more base versus these in sheer quantity. And although you could argue which one is higher quality, I can hear things on the Dunma Pro that the ADV Furai simply refuse to reproduce. But I can hear things on the ADV Furai that the Dunma Pro is just like, I'm giving an old shit squad cut and then I can't give no more. I can't do it. Yeah, you've got a little Scottish bastard in there screaming at you, I can't do it, bitch. And that's where these surprise me. And that's when I figured it out. Not part of why I figured it out. Uh, this ties into it. But we've talked about the base, and what really solidified it was playing Modern Warfare. And I'm like, oh, hey, cool. Blam, blam, explosions everywhere, right? It didn't bleed into the footsteps. It didn't bleed into the gunshots. It didn't bleed into the, vo the vocals. It was crystal clear. Which leads me into, like I said, the vocals, the mids. These things accentuate mostly female vocals, but the higher tone male vocals are, I am so sorry for the camera rattle and shake, as soon as I get a new desk, I can have this mount on its own little thing so that my warbling of the thing here, of the desk, doesn't affect the, the boom. I'm so sorry, I know they've probably been giving to those of you that actually watch, like nausea, I'm sorry. Continuing, that is not to say that male vocals are held back by these. Not at all, actually. Male vocals come across beautifully accented, deep, throaty, and with wonderful body. And when paired with something like a kick drum set, the initial impact is kind of sort of there. Remember we talked about how there's not a lot of definition in the upper bass? Well, there's not a lot of impact there, but there's depth. I can hear the air reverberating inside the chamber of the drum. An upright suspension drum or upright bass drum or just a bass drum. I hear the air reverberating in between the two membranes. And how that ties into the mids is bass guitars. <laughs> the thong, the, the pull, the picking, the slapping of the chords. 
off as an interesting sound. It's not quite like the twang or the twang of a guitar or an acoustic guitar. I should say electric guitar or an acoustic guitar. No, no, no. It's far lower from what I'm noticing. Outside of the micro details that go in there. Oh, new track started. Shit. I was not paying attention. Well, if it cuts out in a weird spot, it's because dear old Foster wasn't paying attention to the recording again. Sorry. Right. Onwards and upwards. So, what you hear is... Dom, dom, dom. And you hear the thumbing, you hear the pulling, or occasionally even the picking, the, the slight... You miss the clack of the pick as it exits or as it hits the cord. But you hear the, the impact of the slap, you hear the, the touching of a vibrating string to a thumb, and as it pulls and releases, that moment it catches and releases... You hear that, and it immediately goes into a deep, throaty reverberation. And that's beautiful. That That's exactly what I'm getting at, is how it goes straight into it, how it works together. That tells me that their crossover network in here, or the, or the crossover, I believe it's two balanced armatures and a uh, the super bass driver. Yeah, three independent drivers. That tells me that the crossovers were done expertly well to hear that there is no drop in the beat. It just extends straight into it fluidly, masterfully. It was outstanding. And to not hear bass bleed into the vocals or into those little details that I was talking about with the bass. Oh my god, it was unreal. Vocals in something like a shooter on a TV show are outstanding. They sound like... I won't say it sounds like you are there. I won't say these are realistic sounding. Uh, real sounding. I'll say they're realistic. As in, it can... If I really am getting into it, they can immerse me as if I'm putting on a really good VR headset with a really good pair of headphones. I'm really getting into it like that. That's how it's immersing me. It's not full dive tech, but it's getting real fucking close and it's really fucking dry again. It's under a kilobuck. Even with the other caveats that I had mentioned, no balanced cable, the filters are made to order basically in the batch of them and there are only ever as many as them as there are these. Hmm. Kind of get where I'm coming from now. I guess we make sacrifices for our loves, right? But going into the female vocals, they really shine. They don't pop out of the mix, but they do elevate themselves and come across more forward. But not to the point where they're obstructing or obfuscating other details or becoming a hindrance to add senses of sibilance. That just isn't there, and it's, it's astounding. Going into the upper trebles, uh, all the treble register, honestly. The mid to low treble registers are really not bad at all. Uh, if I'm doing my, my head thinking right, the lower treble is very accentuated where a lot of the voices and a lot of the action notes would be. The click, clap, blap, blap sort of sounds. And when it starts to pitter down and pitter away is just past... The, the sort of a ring, the resonance ring of a hi-hat or a cymbal is where it starts to drop. And I can hear that. Because in something like the Dunma Pro or the Chalcini OCP, that post-hit ring, the reverberation, is very clear, very forward. Especially in something like the T4, where it was extremely well forward. It was put up front and center along with female vocals. This, it doesn't do that, and it slopes down even more so than you might imagine as it gets to the 5 to 10k region. The Trevor filter helps bring that back up, but there's still that minutia of a dip. And that's where it starts to lack, is the initial impact of hi-hats. You hear it. First there is action, and thus there is sound, indubitably so. But there is a lacking of... Intent. You hear the essence on a lot of the sounds. 
but you don't hear the intent, the clashing of stick onto metal on a hi-hat or on a cymbal. It's there. You, you, you hear it, but you don't hear the intent. It's lacking the bite. It's lacking the snap of that instantaneous moment in time where intent and physics met together and they gave birth to a new homogenization of the two. Sound. That's not there, but the essence of the sound, the leavings behind, the birth of the marrying of these two forces, the essence of the sound is very much there. It doesn't hold back on micro details either. And now that I've gone the full gamut, even loosely, I say these are cinematic because not just because I've played modern warfare, modern warfare, I've played some television in them, some anime, yeah, I like my anime, what up, yeah, but I've also listened to some, uh, like a TV series from Netflix's own original lineup, Lock and Key. In the high school scenes, this is where that VR headset starts coming down. I'm hearing stuff going on, the background doors closing and opening, lockers being hit, touched, uh, fiddled with, little voices, whispers, talks, people just conversing in the background. All around me. Especially in the backfield. There's not a lot of verticality to the sound, but oh boy. These work damn good in a movie, or a TV series, or an anime series. It helps to give you that VR goggle sort of immersification. Immersification? Immersion, I think that's the right word. Oh lord, Jin help me. The immersion of the sound is about VR headset deep. We talked about the sound gamut, how the intent isn't there. But the body, the essence of everything is just so beautiful. Except for the dynamic driver parts. The, that one's got, uh, that one's got intent. <clears throat> yeah. Oh boy, that one has intent. Once it reaches deep enough, yeah, it's got intent. <clears throat> okay, digressing. Sorry. This stage. I had hinted that the immersion gets about VR headset deep. Not room deep. But VR headset, you're in a little room. And you've got this headset on you, and the stage is on average around neck level. The deepest it'll get is about upper chest, maybe? Collarbone region level? But never any deeper, and never any higher than just a squidgen above the top of the head. But the further out you go, the a bit higher, you can be tricked into think you're hearing. <clears throat> <clears throat> but most of everything is on about a head wide, or head tall, but very deep, room-like field through a VR headset. There's a bit of obfuscation, or maybe the word is parallaxing. An artifact, there we go, it's an artifacting therein. It's not a one-to-one, -one, but it's trying really, really, really hard. And what I've noticed is the frontal field stage can go anywhere from a mono field Bifield, trifield, quadfield, pentafield, and so on. Almost to the point where I can see it in my head, audibly changing and mutating its forward facing fields, dividing them up like cells, giving birth to a new field. And that's all it ever is. It's little fields that tie in really well, but only ever go so good as a Venn diagram to where the edges touch. And there's that little bit of obfuscation where they are not fully one-to-one -one with one another to create a more cohesive, larger field, but rather two smaller fields coming together to a smaller marrying point and then opening back up. And it's not a bad thing. I've never heard it done so dynamically so well and dividing itself up and then coming back down into one larger blobby. So that calling it a blob would be insulting, hence the word field. And I can easily put my attention into any one of these fields. And then when you get to the side of the head, it breaks off into its own little conical, rectangular conical thing to where it's vertically very stout. 
but horizontally very wide. And then it gets to the back of the head. The back of the head is like one large panoramic view where it dims very much in the center. And then it brightens back up almost uh, exponentially or logarithmically as it gets closer to the side of the head. Beautiful gradient of how that sound works. And the little skips between these sound fields, big ass air quotes if you're not watching, is, doggy snore, sorry, is that the skip between fields is so minute, I had to really, 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 really be focusing in on it to honestly notice it because otherwise it was, I was being distracted with everything else that it just wasn't an issue. So if you're a super ultra mega picky, you might just notice that and it may just be an issue for you. But if you're not super hoity toity ultra mega picky, then it may not be an issue for you. Therein within the stage is the imaging. The imaging, as far as I can tell, to the best of my ability, is spot fucking on. Like I know where something is going to be. Modern Warfare? Drop shoddy. Sorry, dudes. <laughs> They're done so. I'm big boy now. Felt great. I knew where things were, approximately how far they were from me. The general direction was far more accurate than the general distance being given. So these are better for directionality, but not depth, is what I'm noticing. But there's still that bit of a trickery going on in that VR headset world that I'm telling you it can sort of offer up. So to the best of my ability, all I can say is that the imaging is absolutely amazing, borderline, really fucking stellar, to the best of my ability. Okay, so this is me from the future. Hello. After talking about uh, what I believe was the stage, what I didn't talk about was uh, a bit of the resolution. The resolution on these is out fucking standing. It should go to go without saying. But these sound very realistic, and that whole VR headset plunking down, that's not to be taken lightly. I would not be upset if they if it ate crackers and cookies in the bed. That kind of I'm cool with that. All the misgivings of all the other stuff that I'm not happy about. I can either do that myself or supply my own thing or request maybe a deal, and they might work with you on it, who knows? $500 is a lot of damn money. They might be willing to, to work something out, who knows? ADV is, so far as I have seen, a wonderful fucking company. They've even gone back and helped a dude that I know with a coupon thing, because he's really flip floppy. That kind of good company, they really care. So the clarity, extremely clear. I had mentioned, and I'm not going to touch on the filters here, because this video is already trailing on to be long enough, honestly. So if you want to know more about the filters, go watch the unboxing uh, where I talk about the filters. Because I do a pretty damn good job there. But nothing is ever veiled, to my definition of the word veiled. Obfuscation, uh, removing of the details, or hiding of the details, or muddying of the details. All it is is... A different layer of brightness and forwardness to summarize what I had said about the filters. And the clarity across the board is just clean, clear. I don't get a sense of obfuscation or a sense of veil. Things could do to be lifted up a bit more, but the sounds, the, the tones, they sound very... From what little I understand about some of these sounds, like hi-hats and cymbals as an example, they sound right. Maybe not real, but realistic. There's a bit of suspension of disbelief one must still have, that I still have because I'm not formally trained, I'm going by ear and memory most of the time, and some other gear that I have, and there's no telling what the studio has done in the mix, you know what I mean? So, yes, that is why I love these and give them the go, it's just the entire representation of the sound. I can just dig into it. There's very little acclimation time required. I just pop them in, I go, and I sound... Well, I sound happy because they make me sound happy. <laughs> and that rains in the whole package for $500. Is this really good buy? Um, yeah, I suppose, honestly. 
I, I know there are other things at or below $500 that may give you better bang for your buck enjoyment. But so far, to me, and what I have heard, this gives an Ether CX like in terms of separation. Not quite on the level of the Ether CX in terms of raw separating ability. Or maybe even tonal accuracy. That's really why I don't talk about tonal accuracy a whole bunch. I don't know a lot of these sounds, so I can't really comment that they're that good. But these sound the least metallic and hollow out of a lot of my IEMs versus what I hear on the Ether CX. These get really close to that. Not super touchy-touchy close, but it's a... Uh, you could see it if you look behind you, sort of trailing the distance, right? Not quite as warm and welcoming as the ESP95X electrostatic headphone, but it's got that weird etherealistic sound thing going on where the 95X gives you better intent of sound. They both sound pretty similar-esque in terms of the body, the essence of the sound being there. As for whether these are a cool or warm IEM, I'm not 100% sure. I'd have to say the lower it goes on the gamut, it's very lukewarm. The upper range is not quite cold, but it's not quite warm either. But it's a bit... it ranges from lukewarm to about neutral, to be honest. Comparing it to some other things, it doesn't have that natural tinny, overly metallic maybe even plasticky sort of sound that some BAs can offer. These are done very well. A lot of attention is given to them, even without a filter in. They're not offensive in the best of ways possible, not disappointing like the T4. But to the best of my knowledge and the best of my ability, I'm going to tell you that I'm going to have a really hard time not just straight up dropping fat money on these things and buying a pair straight up from the heart. I, I, I want these in my earballs again. They have other models that are higher and in terms of looking at raw cost. That may be a better buy. But I don't know how much better, how much worse. I guess I'll find out if I'm lucky enough to get another set in for a review. So, I'm gonna cut it there. I'm sure I've droned on for long enough. Uh, longer than I honestly should have. But I was really excited about these. I was honestly having tons of fun and I am just so really fucking sad to see them go because I really, 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 really enjoyed them. Stock cable and everything, problems and everything, I really enjoyed these. And using my favorite tips on them, they just melted into nothing in my ears. The included tips were damn good. I'm gonna be sad to see these go. But if I don't stop now, I'm going to keep rambling for way worse. So, thank you very much, my wonderful, beautiful children, for tuning on in and listening to me ramble for entirely way too long. I'm trying harder to stick to a formula. I think I did better this time than any other time. I just couldn't shut the fuck up. <sighs> Sorry. I, I am practicing. I swear to God, I'm practicing. But, thank you. Have a beautiful morning. A lovely afternoon and a pleasant evening, my dear children. Rest up and grow strong and may you travel far and wide within the realm of your dreamscape. Sometimes it leads you back to me, your favorite. The great wizard, Fossil. Ready, steady, let's get Fossil some more gin and poof.